there as well. So just want to warmly welcome everyone to our prayer meeting and Bible study. And uh, to thank you very much indeed for joining with us. And also to those that tune in uh, through the various online social media platforms. We are always encouraged to know that you're with us. And if the internet's not working and we're not able to broadcast, uh, it's good to know we get good reports to hear that you did miss it. And uh, you, you wait patiently for it. So we want to welcome all who are present and all who are listening online or through the webcast. We trust the Lord will bless us and encourage our hearts again this evening. Just remain seated and we'll sing a few verses of uh, the hymn 383. 383, please. Three. We'll sing the first and the last verses only. A few others are gathering in. The boys and girls are still downstairs. They're not all away yet, so we may have some of our workers just a little later in our prayer meeting. But 383, just remain seated, verses 1 and 3, please. Verses 1, 3, or sorry, 1, 2, and 3, the first three verses. Again, just remain seated as we worship the Lord. For all the Lord hath done for me, I never will cease to praise him. Verses 1, 2, and 3.
Uh, let's just take a few moments and we'll bow briefly in prayer. Father, it is with thanksgiving and praise that we approach unto thee and we come in that high and holy name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We thank thee for thine only begotten <laughs> Son. We praise thee that there is none like unto him. He is the incomparable Christ. We bless thee, Lord, that there's nothing in creation and there's nothing that could ever be created would ever come any close to thine only begotten and well-beloved Son. We thank thee, Lord, that uh, Solomon could say that he is altogether lovely. He is the chiefest of ten thousand to our soul. We can say, this is my beloved. And we praise thee, O God, for the one who is the rose of Sharon fair, the one who is the lily of many valleys. And we thank thee, O God, that we can say like Thomas of old, my Lord and my God. And we bless thee that he is our saviour. We thank thee that he is our redeemer. We thank thee that he is our shepherd. He is our king. And we bow before thee and we praise thee that at thy right hand he's our great exalted high priest. He is the apostle of our profession. And we are to look unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith. And we thank thee, O God, for the one who is Lord, Lord of lords and King of kings. The one who not only came into this world the first time by virgin birth, and for us lived a sinlessly perfect life and then died an atoning death on the cross we thank thee O God and praise thee for his life that was given in sacrifice for us we thank thee for the shedding of his blood we rejoice that he paid sin's price in full and now he is risen from the dead he's alive forevermore exalted to thy right hand a prince and a saviour and one day he's coming back to this earth again one day he shall appear in the air he shall come with clouds and holy angels and saints made perfect and we thank thee O god the dead in Christ will rise to meet him in the air. We bless thee and thank thee, O God, that we which are alive and remain, we shall see him in all of his beauty. We shall see him in all of his glory. And on that day he will set everything right that was wrong in this earth. He will vindicate and honour his holy word. And at the name of Jesus and the proclamation of that high and lofty name, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And even though they reject him and they despise him and they hate him and they do not believe in him, yet, Lord, one day they will see him for themselves. And, Lord, we acknowledge that for us in our union with Christ, we have nothing to fear the return of the Lord. Lord, we anticipate it. We look for it even in our hearts every day. And even sometimes, Lord, unmindful lord a sigh or even a cry or a tear is a reminder of this world we're in it is a cry unto an indication of a soul that longs to be free us where sin will never molest where the peace of heaven will never be disturbed will there be no anxiety or tears or worry no more pain and the former things would have passed away and all things would become new O oh lord that everlasting day where there'll be fullness of joy will there be pleasures forevermore oh to be there what must it like to be there and lord we are envious of those who have gone just a little ahead of us and that's all that's what death has become for those who are born again and washed in the blood they have only gone ahead just a little before us and they're there they're seeing Christ. They're walking the golden streets of heaven. They're basking in God's own light. And yet, Lord, we know that some of our loved ones are out of Christ. They're out of Christ without a saviour. And they have no hope to cheer the tomb. They have nothing to look forward to in the future. Lord, they have only temporal things on earth. And they don't even satisfy. We cry to thee for mercy. Lord, we think of this hymn, Give me the faith which can remove that can sink the mountain of Lord's sin and the barriers to coming to Christ to a plain. And then give us that childlike, Lord, praying love which longs to build thy house again. We pray, Lord, you will enable us uh, to live to proclaim the sinner's friend, to exalt the Saviour, to evangelize the lost, and to work for Christ and to labor and go on spending our time in the labor of the Lord, 
So hear our prayer and bless us this evening. Encourage Robert as he brings a report on the summer work and the Bible club and the uh, Lord, the mustard seed children's meeting. Grant, Lord, you'll encourage his heart and you'll strengthen our faith in prayer tonight as we will again hear what the Lord has been doing and what God has already done. So hear our prayer and continue with us now in Jesus' precious and worthy name. Amen. Now we are delighted to have our brother Robert McConnell with us. He's been an extremely busy man, let me tell you, and he's been working hard through the summer and again now in the autumn and winter. I'm going to invite him to come now. He's going to give us a report on the Mustard Seed Children's Meetings. Thank you. Well, as we bring this wee report tonight, uh, I would like to refer you to Exodus chapter 2, uh, because as we read through this particular passage, I would say the scoffer would say, and look over the shoulder and say, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. It's all a waste of time. You see, in Exodus chapter 2, we read there of Moses and his own mother, Jochebed, taking up the duty of looking after her very own son, found among the, rush, the rushes there by the daughter of Pharaoh, and needing someone to raise the child, Miriam ran and brought her own mother, and the mother indeed of Moses, the little one, in the basket. And as we read that passage, we see the very first time child benefit was ever paid out because this princess paid the child's own mother uh, to look after him. But it was more than just looking after him. You see, others looking on would say, you're wasting your time, Jochebed. You're wasting your time because whenever we get down to Exodus chapter 2, verse 10, you're wasting your time. Because very soon... That young man will be brought up to the palace. He will have grown. And he will soon forget his godly upbringing. With all the sin and all the wickedness and all the lavish overindulgence that you can just imagine there in that palace, in that ungodly atmosphere, in that ungodly place, all for pleasure, all for self. Others looking on would say, Jock a bed, a waste of time. Look where he's headed. Look where he's going. But it wasn't a waste of time. That godly mother's efforts paid off. And in the end, because of what we read in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24 and 25, we see that that young man, yes, made many a mistake, even in his adult days. But by faith, or having come to faith in God, Moses, and the language is really strong, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. It wasn't a waste. That effort in those childhood days, those very early years, paid off. And you know, if we can get a child into our mustard seed meeting on a Tuesday night, if we can get that same child or even slightly older into our youth fellowship or into our Sunday school, are out to our special efforts for the children. With all of that, and when we get them into every meeting, we really find that the statistics are against us. The statistics cry out, you're wasting your time. Because if we get those children for three hours in a week, we really only get 1.75% off their whole week. The world, the devil, other influences, misdirected ideas, sin and falsehood get the other 98.25% of their time and their attention. You're wasting your time. But we're not. Because God has promised in his word in Proverbs 22 verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not, he will not depart from it. You know, an old judge once said that a child brought up through Sunday school 
is very seldom brought up before him. You see, God's word has a curbing influence even upon the ungodly from an early age. But as the power of God, the message of the gospel has also got a wonderful eternal influence, saving those that believe. And we believe this is the case for both boys and girls, and men and women. And so as I lay out this little report before you tonight, do bear that in mind. It's not a waste of time. It will never be a waste of time. It will always be of great benefit. And this is our driving force. And if the Saviour saw fit to bear up the little ones in his arms, then where do we stand in the shadow of that great pattern? The work that we're involved in, and it's a whole team effort, uh, many involved, is really threefold. There is the mustard seed meeting on a Tuesday night. There are the little pop-up meetings held in the month of July, and then the holiday Bible club held in the month of August. So we'll just go through them very quickly. And maybe you're not familiar with all of these works. You maybe hear them being announced from the pulpit, and you maybe want, we want to give you an idea in the report of what happens in these meetings, and um, who takes part, and uh, what our aim is. Uh, as we seek to bring the little ones in under the sound of the gospel. First of all, the mustard seed meeting, and we will start there because we're right in the throes of that. We have already three weeks behind us, and uh, we're just sitting today rejoicing in the fact that the Lord has really taken, taken our numbers up quite steadily. And uh, we would usually normally get maybe 30 to 40 children. We would normally have a lot more on the books. We would maybe, maybe have upwards of 60 on the books but because of the day and age that we're living in, there is no rush, there is no push, there is no desire from parents to have children out on a regular basis. And then because there's so much dysfunction in families, that one Tuesday night the children are with this parent, and the next Tuesday night they're away with somebody else or another parent or whatever uh, the situation may be. And so that really eats into the continuity and the consistency. But we were getting upwards of maybe 30, 35, maybe 40 children on a, 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 a good week last term. Uh, but this term it has really taken off. Every night we print out little pictures for them to take home and I'm running up to this photocopier or somebody's running up to it and uh, printing off more. And that's a great problem to have. Uh, tonight, uh, I think there must have been uh, somewhere in the mid-50s in the meeting tonight. And so again, uh, the numbers have steadily increased. And we rejoice in that. And uh, uh, we have to be thankful to the Lord uh, because these children, they're here because the Lord has them here. And there's nothing uh, attractive, I suppose, in many ways to the dead heart, the ungodly, the blind, and those even who are, even in their young age, to have them in God's house. But here they are, and the Lord has them here. The little meetings will run from September right through to the end of March. And that really is uh, a time scale of roughly 26 to 28 weeks. And... Uh, they seem quite long when you're starting out in September. We've got a whole season and it's, it's a, of a mountain of work to do. But all of a sudden, uh, that season comes and goes. And uh, we do end at the end of March because of the light nights and the better weather. There is that difficulty of getting the children in. Our buses go out uh, in around the 6 o'clock mark sometimes, maybe even a bit earlier. And uh, do pray for our buses and our workers because they have to rush their tea, maybe get a bit of indigestion as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there is that danger and that difficulty, especially in wet, cold, slippery nights, uh, to have the children gathered in safely. And uh, we thank the Lord for those who constantly are always there. You're never having to worry, will they be there? They're always there. There's that little nucleus of folk who give of their time. And we're so thankful for it. It takes so much pressure off uh, to know that that willingness is there on the buses. Our meeting commences at 7. Uh, we do try to finish about 7.45. And sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. <clears throat> but um, the reason for that is we want to get our workers back into the prayer room and the prayer time. Uh, they deserve that as well. And uh, also for the benefit of the parents, uh, whenever we say we'll be, we'll be bringing the children home at a certain time, we want to bring them home at a certain time. And many of the little ones who are with us are very young. And so... Uh, that sort of 7.45, 8 o'clock, 8.15, into half eight, starts to get late for them. And we don't want parents then saying, well, listen, it's too late. We don't want them uh, to go. And so 
we do try to, to cut it as short and as tight as we can. But we do have logistical problems because of the numbers are large and buses have to go out and then go out again and then sometimes maybe go out again. The muster seed meeting is aimed at children between the ages of 4 and 11, primary school age. But we are living in a day and age where the childhood of our children is being stolen completely off of them. And uh, to get children into the meeting beyond P6 is a big thing. We thank the Lord that we still do, but for many, because of what they see and what they hear and what they're presented with, their childhood is gone and stolen. That innocency, that tender-heartedness is all taken so quickly by the enemy, the old devil himself. We seek to teach the children uh, memory verses. We try to cover one memory verse every month. We could be try to be box very clever and go for one every week, but I would far rather the children would know it absolutely perfectly, inside out, upside down, rather than learning a whole lot in a half measure. And they do tend to learn them very well. Um, we do also have different people uh, taking part each night. Uh, some will be happy to do the choruses, some will be happy to do the memory verse, others are happy to do the story or the quiz, and others are happy uh, to give out the pictures or to sit amongst the children and every part of the meeting uh, is important uh, there's nothing that's one bit more important than the other because there's somebody at the front is speaking and a little one needs attended to uh, that person attending to that little one is the most important person in the meeting at that point uh, because they're uh, dulling down a distraction and allowing others to retain uh, uh, that concentration and not miss out and so everything gels together not all about the person at the front it's about the whole effort of the team and the Lord's glory in it all we do also try to have visiting speakers and uh, we would very often have Auntie Christina and Auntie Joyce and that gives us all a nice rest and a break and something new at the front and the children enjoy that as well as those workers coming along throughout the year there are many purposes to having a mustard seed meeting uh, the highest thrust of all is to present them with their need of the Saviour. But there are many other avenues off of that. We need to teach the children what's in the Bible because the most of them do not know. They have no idea of any of the stories. They have no under we would think that would be the case, but it is not the case. They have no idea, no understanding of the most basic of the stories in the Bible. And they have not definitely no understanding of the application of those stories, uh, which is then brought out by our workers as they would teach them with their need of the Saviour. Another purpose in those meetings is to encourage them uh, part of this church um, to be interested in this church and to come to the services and to be part of the Sunday school and to retain their position after the mustard seat meeting is over to get them then into the youth fellowship and we have to say our brother Norman and others in that team uh, have been very diligent in bringing those little ones straight away you see if you have a child maybe 11 or 12 and they finish the mustard seed and then you expect them to come back in 3 years time when they're 15 or 16 to youth fellowship that'll never happen they'll be gone you'll have lost them and you have done it so we just bring them straight over. Some of them may be a little hair too young, but what odds? Bring them straight over and hold on to them. And we have seen some wonderful trophies of grace. There are trophies of grace in this prayer meeting tonight because of those meetings. And there are trophies of grace uh, in our youth fellowship uh, having come up through the children's meeting and to see them going on with the Lord, it really encourages our heart. But the mustard seed meeting do come to an end. Uh, we finish there just before Easter, and uh, as the mustard seeds finish, then the youth fellowship it will close in uh, May time, and then the Sunday school draws to a close in June, and uh, through all, all of that time we do seek to try and keep into contact with the children in Cumber by getting into the schools. <clears throat> I would ask for you to pray about that matter. Um, there's been some changes in the schools, in one of the schools in the, the town here. And uh, although we have made that contact, there has been nothing coming back the other way. And we would ask that you would pray that that would um, not be broken and that we would continue to get into that particular school 
as well as the other one uh, because there's an important link uh, with our children that they still see you're still in the land of the living and you're still there and uh, it does draw them in to hold their attention for the summertime because as soon as school's out in the summer uh, during the month of July we do our what has now become very fondly known as our pop-up meetings and they were really born out of um, all the lockdowns and we endeavoured just to get out into the community, out into the fresh air. Nobody could say a dicky bird to us outside. Um, we got the, the gazebo up. And if you're not too sure what a gazebo is, it's a very expensive tent with no sides in it. And we had a, we had a wee original gazebo. Uh, it was a terrific job, but it was really designed for a garden. It wasn't designed to go up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. And, uh, well, it really came to an end. It's going cheap there if anybody wants to buy it. I've kept it good. And, uh, but we were gifted with an, another wonderful one. It really goes up so quickly, comes down so quickly, so strong and so sturdy. And it's really bright, bright yellow. And uh, you put that up in the middle of a housing estate, well, the only thing you're worried about is the airplanes landing on it. But it really does bring an attractive attention. And we, in the month of July, we will go out into the community with a little leaflet drop on one day. And then the following day, we will then go straight back at the appropriate time on the, what the leaflet says and have a little meeting, about half an hour long, and then we will have a little sort of an outdoor picnic and treat the children uh, to little prizes and sweeties and uh, drinks and things like that there. And uh, these meetings have been very successful. The Lord has been very good to us. He's given us the, um, the settledness that we need. Out in the outdoor, there is that potential for uh, ones to be disruptive and to be a nuisance and yet the Lord has kept his hand upon that and sometimes older children can get into mischief and uh, maybe be putting a ball over at you or whatever but the Lord has kept all that at bay and it's been good to see little ones in and some of them we don't even know and um, we've made those contacts and we've been able to get them into our mustard seed meeting but then that brings us then on to uh, the month of August and that's our holiday Bible club and it is a big effort, and again, everybody puts their shoulder to the wheel, and uh, we're so glad for that. Um, we begin our preparation long before uh, the week of Holiday Bible Club. Uh, we would like to get ourselves a nice little series prepared for the children. We usually try and do a series on a particular Bible character. Um, during the, uh, this year, we did Daniel, and in, in other years, we've done Gideon, and we've done Joseph, and we've done David. And... Uh, so that the boys and girls know that David inside out. So, and, uh, and it's been good. Um, the reason why we do that is um, to get the children a good grounding into the characters and, and then to present the Lord Jesus Christ through the lives of many of these characters. Uh, we also put together little worksheets for the children on each night's story. And again, that's something they can take home, that parents can see, that the children can, can do and bring back for prizes. And all these things have to be prepared and put together. We do up our own invitations and uh, we, we do our own distribution work long before uh, the Holiday Bible Club commences. We have our consent forms. And then, as well as all of that, um, our sister Janice will put up a lot of stuff on Facebook, which we're very thankful for, both before and then during uh, the Holiday Bible Week. And there's always a good uh, feedback from that, and it's very encouraging uh, even for others to see what's going on in the church here and um, come near the end of the week we begin again getting the printer up and going because we want the parents in for the final night on the Sunday and then we start putting together the goodie bags and uh, we'll break our treasure's heart by running backwards and forwards and then slipping them a bit of paper here and a bit of paper there never done I've never really ever come to our brother and just said hello to him. There's always hello and here's something for you. It's never just a single hello. But he's been very gracious every time. There's never been a problem. Um, and uh, the church has been very good in that way. And even on that, and we'll come to it in a minute or two, the folk here have been very good with gifts as well. You know, but as we do prepare all this work and we do put together the rotas and we see those who are willing to come along, we just... Thank the Lord for so many who are willing to give of their time. Some people take the whole week off their work, and uh, that's that's a big thing, and uh, to give of their time that way. And we know the Lord is no man's debtor, and he will repay. And there are those who are willing to be on the buses every night. There's those who are willing to play for us in the musical instruments, those who are willing to do all the computer work, 
And then there's the food stuff because on the Friday night we always try to treat the boys and girls to sort of an indoor barbecue. And, uh, and again, everything's put together so well and organized so well. And we want to thank so many for doing those things. It takes the pressure off us. And um, so that's our three meetings. And just want to close by saying thank you to all of our workers. Now, we don't really thank you enough, uh, but we do appreciate your efforts and your work. I'd like to thank those who pray for us. There's a little nucleus of people who constantly pray, pray for us. Some of them are in the glory tonight, but we would ask that you would take in and step in and take over that. And let us know. <laughs> Don't just pray for us, but let us just say, look, we're praying for that. We meet on Tuesday night. And that encourages us, uh, us all. Um, we want to thank our sessions for entrusting us with the work. Uh, but most of all, we want to thank the Lord for his protection. So many things can go wrong. And for his mercy and for his love. And for his salvation, because boys and girls have been getting saved. And we rejoice in that. It's the Lord's work. It's nothing to do with us. And he's given us a measure of wisdom and guidance, and we thank him for it. And we pray that as the days progress, that we'll see many of these little ones flourishing and growing and developing. And uh, households in under the sound of the gospel. Family saved and worked on for eternity. Thank you very much. Well, a sincere thanks to our brother Robert for giving us that uh, report on the children's work, the pop-up Bible meetings and also the Bible club, and a little bit of insight into what goes on on the Tuesday nights here in the church and also through uh, the year, and we do appreciate that, and uh, we do thank our brother very much indeed. Uh, could we just say then, say farewell to those who are listening on the internet, and uh, we're going to get down to our season of prayer. And we trust the Lord will be with us, he'll encourage us, and he will strengthen our faith as we have heard something of the children's work.